Today we're going to talk about a pricing strategy that will help you make the most money possible. Welcome, this is number three in a multi-part series on pricing strategies. I am Mike Gaston and I'm thrilled to have you along. Today is probably gonna be the most important of the series that I do because we're gonna talk about value-based pricing and value-based pricing has a huge potential to transform your business and my friends, that is not hyperbole. And by the way, hyperbole is not an easy word to say. We've had to do multiple takes to get that right. And that is not hyperbole. And that is not hyperbole. Blah, blah, blah. But before we get into value-based pricing, what it is and how it can transform your business and some things to consider about it, I wanna ask you if you haven't already, please take a moment and subscribe to this channel. It's a newer channel. I'm building a community around entrepreneurship, value creation, wealth creation, branding, success, life, fulfillment, all these things that can lead to what Aristotle calls the good life. So I'd love to have you be part of this conversation. I'd love to have you join me. So please, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Let's talk about value-based pricing. What is value-based pricing? Well, it's kind of obvious by the name. It is basing your pricing on the value that you're creating versus the time and, and expertise that you're bringing to the table. So in my last installment, I talked about hourly based pricing and I said, hey, that's the most common. When you're a service based business, you're a freelancer, a consultant, a small development group, a little creative agency, you're typically using hourly based pricing and you're approaching the market saying, look, I've got 10 hours. I charge 100 bucks an hour. This project's going to be a thousand bucks. But the problem with that is you're assuming that your time is worth the same amount to each customer that you encounter. And the fact of the matter is it's not. And so if you can determine what the value is to your customer, you can charge accordingly. Now, this is really important because, it, like I said, it will transform your business. No longer are you tied to your time. No longer are you tied to your rates because Long and short of it, you only have so much time. Even if you keep adding people, you have a limited inventory of time. That's your most scarce and your most difficult resource to come by. It's your most valuable, actually. And when it comes to your rate, there's a ceiling. Like you might be able to charge 100 bucks an hour, then you get up to 150 bucks an hour. Maybe you get all the way up to 250 bucks an hour. You're feeling great, like we're killing it. We're charging awesome rates. But you can't get away with 300, 500, $1,000 an hour. It's, I mean, look, there are people that will pay anything for a service, but it becomes more and more difficult. And the set of people that you can work with becomes smaller and smaller. The market just will scream uncle when it gets these rates that just seem outrageous because they have a hard time tying those rates to, to the value that they're going to get. And so by moving to a value-based model, value-based pricing allows you to escape all of that. It completely transforms the relationship between you and your client. What ends up happening is in the old model, it's very transactional. I'm gonna give you some of my time and you're gonna give me a specific amount of money. It divorces it from the thing that you're actually doing with it. The transaction is about your time and money. But in the value-based pricing model, it keeps the relationship centered on the work that you're doing, the deliverable and the value that you're creating, the problem that you're solving for the customer, and it ties your payment to that. So what you wanna be thinking about is how can you tie what you do to the value that you're creating your customer? Now, let me give you a quick example just to prove the point and then we'll move on. Think about two different customers. One is a small one-man shop. Let's say he's a mason and he probably does somewhere between 95 and $120,000 a year in masonry work. He's got a pickup truck, he drives around and he's got some little clip art logo and he's come to you and said, hey, I want a new logo. I want to look more professional. Now, he's not going to be growing his firm and adding all kinds of people. He's not doing big mergers and acquisitions. This guy is just running a good little business. He's an artisan and a craftsman, and he wants a logo that represents his business more. And let's say at the end of the day that you know you do the logo work and it takes uh, 10 hours, like I said before. So if you're doing the, the uh, hourly based pricing, you're going to say, well, it's 100 bucks an hour. That's 1,000 bucks. Now, the other customer has a million dollar business and they are ready for a new logo. And let's just assume for argument's sake that it takes the same 10 hours to create their logo. 
Now the guy in the pickup truck making 90 to 120 thousand dollars a year, when he gets a new logo, it's not necessarily going to impact his business in a dramatic way. But let's say it increases his business by 10 percent. So we'll just take the median. We'll go look. It's a hundred thousand dollar business. Ten percent. Now he's doing hundred and ten thousand dollars. So you helped him grow his business ten percent, but you helped it grow by ten grand. Not a lot of money. He's not going to be willing to pay a ton of money for that logo. But let's go to the million dollar business. Let's say that logo that you create for them helps grow their business by ten percent. Also, well, that's a hundred thousand dollars. In each instance, on the, on, the, on the hourly base, you charge each of them a thousand bucks because that's how you think. But at the end, the million dollar business, they stand to grow a hundred thousand dollars from your work. And you left all this money on the table. They would have gladly, knowing that they could make another 10% on their business, they would have gladly paid more for that. For them, that's a huge deal. And so this value-based model helps shift you away from selling your time and focusing on how can you create value for your customer. And when customers have vendors and people that they work with that are focused on creating value, solving problems, and helping them grow, they tend to value those vendors and relationships a lot more than they do those more tactical where they're just trading time for money. So I hope that this convinces you the power of value-based pricing. Now here's the challenge. A lot of folks think, well, value-based pricing, I'm going to determine what my work is worth. So you walk into the customer, the prospect, you go through your sales meeting, and they say, well, we think this job is worth this, and you're arguing, no, it's worth a lot more, I'm an expert, you don't understand. And so you start arguing over what you think your work is worth. And that, my friends, is not value-based pricing. That's your value on your work, and that doesn't necessarily help close deals, and that doesn't sell. So people hear value-based pricing and go, well, I tried that and it doesn't work. You know, people don't value what I do. I'm an artist, I'm a developer, I'm such a smart person, I'm a nerd, nobody gets me. Uh, I tried selling on value and it didn't work. But the problem is typically people that do that and say it doesn't work, it's because they're selling on their concept of what value is. And value-based pricing is based on the customer's concept. So here's the challenge. When you move to value-based pricing, what you have to become good at is not showing them, look how good I am at doing this, look how good I am at doing that, here's my portfolio, here's all the accolades, here are all the testimonials, this is why you should hire me. You gotta have those things, those get you the sales meeting. What you have to become good at is helping the customer, the prospect, the one, the client. You're, you gotta help them understand and articulate how your work is gonna impact their business. They have to articulate with you what the value is worth. So the sales discussion shifts from what's it gonna to cost to get this job done to what does this work solve? What problem does it solve? How does it make the company better? And then you've gotta help transition that to what is that worth? That's not easy to do. And this is one of the reasons why I think value-based pricing is not as prevalent as it should be. I think it's intimidating for people to figure out how do I help my prospect, my client come to value my work. It's intimidating, I don't know how to do it. And so I'm just gonna to default to the hourly based pricing. Now here's the thing, this means there's an opportunity for you. If you're chasing after a prospect, you can be guaranteed that there's a few other people that are at the table. They're doing their due diligence, they're looking at a few different designers or programmers or consultants. If you can approach the sales process from a value-based mentality, if you can take them through identifying the problem, where's the pain, recommending how we can fix this, talking about what would fixing this do for the business, how does this affect you, how does it help you, what kind of money do you think you can make from that? If you can take a more consultative approach to your selling, I guarantee you all those other folks at the table, the majority of them, 99.99% of the time, will be talking on an hourly based model. They'll be talking about defining the problem, trying to figure out how much of their time they're gonna to have to put into it, and either delivering a project fee based on that or an hourly rate. You are gonna set yourself up head and shoulders above your competition if you can speak on a value-based level. If you can use that kind of approach and mentality at discovering with the client. And once you get the client to talk with you and say, look, here's the problem, Here's what it would do if we could solve this problem. Here's the impact I think it's gonna have on my business. Then it's a very natural discussion to say, okay, let's work together to see what this is worth. You don't have to dictate to them. You say, you know, is this, you know, if I can help you grow the business by $100,000, would you agree that this work is worth $10,000? 
And you could talk about how it's going to grow the business over multiple years. So it could become, uh, would you agree that this is going to grow the business $100,000 a year? Yes. So the, over five years, that's $500,000. Would you agree that this project is probably worth about $50,000, assuming that we can be successful together? You're not trying to get them to trap them in a corner or get them to say, you know, the yes, and then you go, aha, that's what it's, but you work with them. You're negotiating, but you're also collaborating on what the value should be and what you should charge. At that point, it becomes very easy to close business because you've gotten the customer and the prospect to work with you to discover the problem, to discover the solution, and to agree what the solution is worth and what you should be paid. It's a much more consultative and a less combative posturing and it really cues up the relationship uh, in a healthy way. It cues up the relationship to be much more successful. Everybody's satisfied. You're getting paid what you know you're worth. The client is excited about what you're going to solve for them and they're invested in the solution and they're invested in your success. Guys, I hope that this was useful to you. I know I covered a lot of ground, but I want to at least get this idea out there. You should really explore value-based pricing. There's a ton of stuff out there online if you want to do more research, and I'll try to do more content on how to sell based on value-based pricing and so on in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Again, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. If you thought this was useful, give me a like, and make sure to share it with somebody that you think could use it. Guys, I'm grateful for your time, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.